In today's video, we're turning me into a soulless monster again. I'm using Photoshop to become a literal dead man, and I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way. If you haven't seen my Edit War video, what's wrong with you? The point is, it's October, and in that video I announced Benny Spooky Edit War 2022, which basically means Photoshop contest, and I gave you these photos you could edit. Now, I thought it'd be very funny to give it a shot myself, because, uh because fun, epic, yay. Let's run Photoshop and get the hell started. And subscribe. And hit the Welcome to Photoshop, ladies and gentlemen. Let's first drop in this beautiful image of me. We are going for the classic zombie image, the one where he's sort of emerging from the grave. Gorgeous, let's go for it. This is going to be like a, well, beautiful pile of dirt, as you can see. And right behind me, of course, this beautiful tombstone. Let's put that behind me, like I said, rotate it a bit. There you go. I just want to make sure the main elements are put in first, so I just have everything I need. Uh, this is going to be the background sort of part of it at least now we're gonna have to cut some stuff out so let's get straight into it starting with the tombstone which is pretty easy since the background is super even we can just use the magic wand few clicks and done for the dirt pile I actually changed things up quite a bit by using the magnetic lasso tool this tool basically guesses where your edge is and then automatically connects to it it's not perfect but since this is a literal pile of shit I don't think it matters that much I did refine it though using the refine edge tool then for the small gravestones I use my standard the pen tool. This simply had to be spot on. Takes a bit longer, but the results are definitely worth it. Now I had to make it look like I was actually sitting in the dirt. So using some brushes, I erased an area or two and that looked good enough for now. It's later going to be covered with colors and shadows anyway, so it's fine. I connected the grass bits and well, there you have it. Okay, now everything is sort of in place, but we do need to make this very cohesive first. So let's go and make the background a bit darker. Let's take away some highlights and add some contrast. Be Beautiful. Then we want to add a whole bunch of blue because that makes it look like it's night just a little bit. Add a bit of contrast to that as well. Like that. That's pretty good. Then elements like the gravestone, for example, also need that dark effect. Something like this should be pretty good. We do need to fix those shadows later, but that's a problem for then. Uh, then we're going to have to add some color to me as well. Just a bit darker and some blue. Now, as for the lighting, I'm going to use me as a reference. So that means the light is pretty much going to be coming from above, it seems. So uh, let's kind of translate that into these images as well. As far as that's possible, of course. The light on these gravestones is the most important because if that doesn't match you are definitely gonna be able to tell that this is all over the place there you go that is looking pretty good i think now that's what we're gonna have to do to all of these gravestones so uh kill me now It's time for shadows, mostly on the gravestone. Using a soft brush, I went over the area to make it look a bit more accurate. Same goes for some in the back, and then I moved onto the pile of dirt. Adding ambient shadows is one of the most important things when things are actually touching each other, like in this example, me and the pile of dirt. I then started painting shadows on myself, since some lit up areas are blocked by the gravestone. Pretty important detail, I would say. Okay, now I'm gonna do something that I've never done before. I've merged the background elements with all the gravestones into one layer right here. And I'm going to go to filter and choose neural filters. Then I'm going to go to depth blur right here. It's going to be processing for a bit. So what I'm going to do is try making a depth blur with this instead of actually doing it manually. It's a bit wonky, but we can definitely work with it. Then there's also this haze button, which I don't know. It probably just adds haze. Oh, dude. Add some color to it as well, using these sliders. This would have taken me so long to do manually, dude. The thing is, it wouldn't really be beneficial because these are all... Like, this is one image, right? They're, they're not separate gravestones. So if they were, I could have easily done it myself, which would have probably looked better also. But these gravestones are all merged into one photo, so this is actually not bad at all. Let's hit OK. Now, obviously, we do have to add some of that contrast back because we're missing that right now. There you go. Dude, this is actually so good good how the edge right here is not looking great though with the blur tool i can literally just go around the edge there you go make it nice and blurry 
as it should be same right here there you go and of course ladies and gentlemen the background needs that blur as well so let's hit okay then we do have to add that haze also because of course this looks a bit strange like so dude uh, that's a very pleasant surprise now let's see what's next maybe using some of these smoke brushes i can make some mist this is a bit much i know but like we can erase stuff you know make it fit the landscape there you go i think that has a pretty nice effect actually i'm not sure exactly yeah no, I like that. And erase it from some of these gravestones to make it look like it's behind them. There you go. That definitely... Yeah, I love that. I thought it'd be absolutely great to replace R.I.P. with Benny. Because, well, it's my grave after all. So, I got rid of the original text and then typed Benny in caps. Pretty neat trick I applied here. I went into bevel and emboss, enabled it and then decreased the layer's fill back to zero. That way only the layer style's effects are visible and not the layer itself. In this case, just the effects from bevel and emboss. Now it sort of looks like the letters are carved into the stone. Perfect. Oh, and I also added 2001 until 2022 because that seemed fun, I guess. Now, the most important thing when you're turning yourself into a zombie is the actual zombie part. I'm using this zombie from The Walking Dead and literally transferred some areas on top of my face. I like the way the mouth looked, so I completely replaced that and then color corrected it to match the original photo. As usual, some shadows and in this case, you and saturation. This process kept going for a while until it looked nice and gross. I also tried adding a bald spot on my face, but that ended up looking pretty weird and I basically just gave up on it because it looked well weird I also thought it'd be fun to put some of that stuff on my arms for the ultimate effect now let's see what happens if we drag a texture like this over my face and just kind of try to merge it in there maybe if we set it to overlay that definitely does something yes we just need me to look a little bit more you know disgusting and as if I just uh, came out of an actual grape hide that and use the brush to uh, put it on some areas like for example most of all my forehead because that's pretty empty right now and a little bit on my arm here as well gorgeous <laughs> gorgeous get it and i'm gonna put some of that stuff on my shirt as well there you go very very nice that actually makes it look a lot more dirty and disgusting and more like i'm actually in this landscape perfect exactly what we need why is speaking so difficult guys one of the most important things of a zombie is obviously his eyes let's go and make this super freaking bright that looks very strange but we'll take it set that on luminosity and then we'll take a brush and paint over my eyes they have to look very uh unnatural most of all there you go is that nice at all looks a bit strange but i guess it's it's okay and the same thing on the other side i suppose and maybe a little bit of glow as well just right there very subtle not too much um then what it is time for some more zombies in the background these are not going to be too prominent but i do want something to be uh, lurking around in the background so let's go and put her uh, right there and this chap in the background there maybe could be nice and then also one on this side in the background gorgeous yeah i feel like literally that's enough it shouldn't be too crowded so let's go and blend these in there Remember the way I put those letters in the gravestone? Here I'm using it to do the opposite, putting something on top of my skin. Using the same technique, I tried adding veins to my skin, which looked nice and disgusting. This actually ended up working pretty well, so I spread it out over my arms too. I want to add some dramaticness, so let's go and drag in these particles, which are from my optics my optics plus library if you want to you know purchase that make sure to check the link down below uh let's just put these in the corner right here a little bit and then kind of paint very softly here not too much just subtly i'm not sure if it's finished already but i feel like we should be able to add a camera raw filter to kind of see what it looks like and then later we can always add some more stuff anyway okay let's see i want this one to be very dramatic like i said earlier so let's make it nice and contrasty make the whites a bit brighter the blacks also some curvies ladies and gentlemen and here we can really play with the tones we can go for a bit more greenish or more purple i feel like purple i mean we like purple that's pretty obvious Ooh, this has an interesting look as well we also don't want to overdo this one so let's just keep it 
you know, keep it chill. So this is before and this is after. It makes it a bit more vibrant, which uh, of course is an artistic choice. Maybe you like before better because it's more realistic, but who knows? You know what I also realized? This looks so much better when it's square. Like, look at this. Anyways, I feel like that's pretty much it. So, um let's go back to the studio. Well, I'm pretty sure that's it then for today. If you like this video, make very sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss a single upload. And then I hope I'll see you in my next video.